Two teams that know each other well. Tigers on the road as Detroit goes up against the Chicago White Sox. 2K Sports presents MLB 2K10. It's all about the American League. The Chicago White Sox, they're looking to get one in front of their home fans. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt getting ready for some sponsored by Pepsi, a chance to check out the Tigers line. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? He's going to be in. Well, lost last night for the Tigers. They want to even this three-game series here today, try and get themselves a chance to break the tie in game three against the White Sox. Well, they're going to need to get back in gear because they have not played well the last few weeks. Just two and eight in their last ten games. Danks gets set and delivers. In just and fooled by that pitch. The count is evened up. Well, how hard is it to win on the road? You uh, hit sharply towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. Carlos Guillen. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple of hits. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at bat for strike one. Hitting 324 lifetime against the White Sox. Hit up the middle. Base hit, gets it down. That's our first hit of the game. Now a quick look for this game at the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. So Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And it's Miguel Cabrera now. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. He deals. Swung on, hit. And Cabrera's got himself a hit. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Right fielder. They tried to go down with that 0 1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steven, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind. Headed for the middle. And there's the RBI, Ordonez with the hit. And Cabrera also comes home. And he's aboard. And got there with a two-run single. Ryan Raber. Well, anytime you get a chance to break open a scoreless game, it's exactly what you have to do. Great piece of hitting, taking what the pitcher gave him to drive in those two big runs. It's Rayburn at the plate. And uh, Steve, they've got the edge right now. They're getting some big runs at an important part of the game. Trying to salt it away early. Well, they've taked out an early lead in this one, just where they want to be. Well, uh, you know, when you hit like this in the first inning, you start to anticipate maybe a healthy bit of run support coming in this game. There's one. But he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. Number 39, Ramon Santiago. Well, you'll take base runners any way you can get them, and sometimes you don't have to have the prettiest swing to be effective. This infield single right here might get this team started. Ball! Cutter misses badly. 1 0. Taps this one foul to the right. Now the 1 1 pitch. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That'll do it as they put that one away. And so they quickly put up the first two runs here, getting an early lead. Detroit up on top, two to nothing. Rick Porcello is going to be pitching. He's starting for Detroit. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? The young to Rick Porcello out on the mound, a young kid with quality stuff. The strikeout numbers aren't there yet because he's still learning how to use a sequence of pitches. But when he gets in trouble as a hitter, you have to look for that two-seam fastball. It's his bread and butter pitch. Damon swings and misses for strike one. He's two for three, lifetime off Porcello. Here's the pitch. A fly ball. Well, I said we've seen some great plays on the field today, and how about some great plays by the fans as well, Gary? Look at the section, a standing ovation. They're all up over there. I want to see the peanut guy make a diving catch now. Let's go. Johnny Damon on a swing and a miss. That's going to be strike three. Well, good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? 
That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five to left center. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Gian's got going. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, you talk about a veteran presence in the middle of the lineup. Paul Canerco has been one of the more consistent power hitters in baseball over the last eight to ten years. He's a guy that just does it in a calm, quiet way. He doesn't put up the huge monster numbers, but he puts up the consistent numbers every year. But he also loves to get that big hit. Let's see if he can deliver one here in this one. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Well, anytime you recognize a slider, you got to be very patient with it. You can't be over anxious. You got to stay back. And then when you see it good enough, let it fly. Down on strikes there. A nice piece of pitching. With good speed now at first base, Gary, they're going to have to at least keep an eye on him. Even though they've got the lead, they've got to watch him because they might try to steal and get back into this game. Strike one. Cabrera will keep an eye on him on the bag. Here's the pitch. Should have let that one go by. Hits the dirt, but it's a strike on a swing. Big swing and a miss. Carlos Quentin goes down swinging. So Rick Porcello holding it down. He's taking care of business all by himself. And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. Larish at the plate. Well, if you weren't watching last night, you may not know he had two RBIs in that ballgame. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Strike two. Called strike below the waist, and he's in the hole now, 0 and 2. And it holds at 0 and 2. Hit up the middle. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball, making that catch. It's layered at the plate. Base is empty, one out. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Here's the pitch. And that's another foul ball. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. But, Gary, that's a great pitch right there. Great command and control. Hitting his spot down and in makes it real tough on the hitter. And it's Everett batting. And that's going to do it. Canerco's there. But John Danks gets him free up, three down. After the two runs allowed in the first, he's doing what he needs to pitch deep into this ball game now. And it's time now to move to the bottom half of the second. And Beckham's in the box. Number 50, Jordan Beckham. Swing and a rocket toward short. That's one away. Here's the Central Division race as it stands going into the dog days of summer. Brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Third belongs to the Twins. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. A pretty surprising the way this Tigers team has played this year. I think disappointing for the whole organization, for their fans, for the city of Detroit. They thought they'd compete, and they're just not getting it done. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Get a little extra giddy up on that one as he just blows it right by him. He strikes out Alex Rios with a swing and a miss. Well, a great job getting an 0-2. That third pitch, unhittable. Guess he figured why waste the pitch, save the arm. He did. Nice job. It's going to be Przinski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. 
Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Strike two, Porcello gives himself a little room. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter, swung late. And A.J. Przezinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. It goes quickly for Ricky Porcello, 1 2 3. He's put in. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. And in settles in for the first pitch. That's a good pitch from Danks. It's in there. And with two strikes on him, now in, she'll protect the strike zone. Oh, he just plain old fooled him right there. He must have been looking for something else. Hit his spot perfectly with that change. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. It's down a base hit. And that'll bring up Carlos Guillen. Well, that pitch down and away is the Guillen. toughest in the game to hit. It's a perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. Keep that in mind next time around with up the middle. And he grabs this one. One. On the first, safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Well, they get the lead runner in second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And he starts Cabrera out. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Well, as a hitter, if you're looking for something off speed, you don't swing at anything hard. But that's what he did. He wasn't expecting that speed, and he swung late. Hard grounded a short, and he gathers this one. That's the second out. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. The series with Detroit, including tomorrow. A division rivalry. They'll face the Twins. That's a team they handled all right the last time up. They'll try for a repeat performance. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. After that, they kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals. A little division rivalry. A team they rolled over last time out. That's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. So, Maglio Ordonez, think RBI here. Career average 337 off the White Sox. Hard grounded a short, fielded by Ramirez. And he throws on to first, that'll retire the side. And so, out of the inning, only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. Detroit two, the White Sox nothing. And Mark Tiana. Well, lost last night for the Tigers. So a three-game series sees them dropping the first. Chance to make it a rubber match against the White Sox. Well, they're going to need to get back in gear because they have not played well the last few weeks. Just two and eight in their last ten games. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, how hard is it to win on the road? You uh, take a look at how this club's doing, and you can see you really like to get back home. Well, you know, they definitely do have a lot of confidence when they're at home, but they have to figure out a way to get that confidence on the road also. And Jim, tell me. Well, he drove in four runs last night. They're hoping he saved some of those runs for today as well. Fielded by Cabrera. And he steps on first. That's the second out. A good feeling first baseman can go a long way to helping a team win a championship. This guy is flashing some level over there. And it's Johnny Damon at the plate. Right there in the top five in home runs. Hot shot towards the hole. From his knees, got him. What a throw. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. The White Sox still hoping to. It's Rayburn at the plate. Now Krasinski sets up. Ball. Just missed with the fastball. 1 0. The 1 0 now. 1 0 pitch. That's a cutter in there. 1 1. Hit on the ground towards second. Back up. 
in time for the up. Let's take a chance now and take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in hits, a lineup that puts the ball in play, finds holes, and gets themselves on base. A real bonus to scoring runners. And the first pitch. Cut fastball in there for a called strike. Danks gets set and delivers. Foul straight back. Change up called strike three. That's the second out. Now Gary, he delivers a change up on this one. And what a great job of working the hitter down and in to ring him up. Looks like he was actually trying to get him to swing over it, but he gets the call in the out. Hit hard on the ground to short. Throws on the first side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. And it'll be the White Sox. Number two hole set to get things started. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. Swings and misses the slider 0 and 1. He delivers. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. But Gary, they really can't seem to mount any offense at all. I mean, one hit through four innings. And There's a ball hit well. Deep in the center field. Way back there. Still going. Got a home run. They trim a bit off that deficit. A solo shot. Only one down. Number 14. But Gary, they need to continue to score. But already the White Sox have some momentum, and they've drawn close. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Great production, Steve. The long ball changes the complexion of a game so often. It sure does. You know with this kind of power, you can catch up quickly. Crab ball got him one away. His pitches complement one another. They work off of each other. And he used a tremendous sequence right there. One, two, three. Strike out. See you later. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. He's the league leader in hits. Couldn't get around in time. 0 1. The pitch hit sharply towards the hole. And it is through. The tying run is on. Now coming to bat. They Chicago tried to go down run. with that 0 1 Second pitch, base. but it gets blasted Number right 15. back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And Beckham's in the box. For his career, he's one oh. for one off Porcello. Slider misses badly with it, 1 and 0. Oh. Ready with a 1 0. Strike one! That one swung on and missed by Gordon Beckham, and that strike evens it up. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late Strike on that two. heater. Sharp bite to that slider, one and two. I got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. The pitch. You're Struck out. him out. That's and number eight in the game. The Chicago White well, they went away right there, and he put a pretty good swing on it, but just couldn't quite make contact. Walking back to the dugout now. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. Towards center field. It's off the wall and a hop. These are the hot bats right now. The highest batting average over the last 10 days, courtesy of State Farm. All these guys have a similar trait, that ability to put the good part of the bat on the ball and make solid contact on a consistent basis. And they're willing to hit from line to line, not just being full hitter. It's going to be Przinski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. He got him. That's nine Ks now. 
Well, they chip away, grabbing an important run with that solo big fly. The White Sox are not. Isaac Gian taking a look at you right there. This club's moving in the right direction offensively. Last half inning, pitching is now critical to give his guys a shot. They try and get this tied. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Here's the pitch. And it's 0 and 2 now. Gerald Laird in a swing situation here. The hitter lays off this pitch, realizing you can't do much. When you get that kind of four seam fastball Ball. down and away, it's tough to hit. The 1 2 pitch. Swung and a ground ball to third. Okay. Retiring Laird. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. The series with Detroit concluding tomorrow. And they'll have to contend with Denard Span and a very good lineup for the Minnesota Twins. The team they beat in the previous series between the two. That'll be a three game series. After that, they kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals, a little division rivalry. A team they didn't have too much trouble with in their previous series. And quite a bit of time away from home for, for them over these next several games. That's a good pitch from Danks. It's in there. This is the go to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Well, I've lost control of that last pitch. That puts a man on base. That'll bring Brandon in, Jeff. Well, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. And it doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. Well, working on the old one count now. And the question after you've hit a batter like we've seen here, Steve, is as a pitcher getting your focus back. Yeah, but listen, it's only one run around. Take a deep breath, get yourself back and settle oh. down a little bit and, and make sure you're right. Here's the delivery. And he strikes him out. He catches Brandon Inns looking for something else. It's the best pitch in baseball. The fastball down and away. If you can master that, you can be successful. He's successful. There's one on. Here's Carlos Guillen. Five lifetime hits, 11 ABs off John Danks. First pitch, AB begins to Guillen. Here's a prime production opportunity for the Tigers. Well, even though they lost the last game, he had two big hits, and that's a good sign if you're the manager of this team that he's starting to swing the bat really well. A liner headed for the hole. Throws to first side is retired. Well, we'll see another good John Danks performance in that inning. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. And one of the top ten averages right now. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Now swing and a shot toward second. One down. Here's a quick check of the home run leaders in the league brought to you by State Farm. Well, it's such an asset to an offense when you hit the ball on the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their team. That ability to drive in a run from first base or to drive yourself in from the plate. And it's Jim Tomey at the plate. He's 0 for 3 for his career off Porcello. Pitch on the way. And he leaves that pitch alone. Jim Tomei with patience evens the count. The pitch. Well, time to call for that changeup. One and two. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. This one swung on and driven hard. And Rayburn. No problem for him as he gets that out. Here's the Central Division race as it stands going into the dog days of summer. Brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Now, pretty surprising the way this Tigers team has played this year. I think disappointing for the whole organization, for their fans, for the city of Detroit. They thought they'd compete, and they're just not getting it done. Hard grounded to short. Everett picks it up. Direct. Throws to first in time. That's three down. It goes quickly for. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Ordonia settles in. First pitch. Launches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. 
And in there, he's two for three today. And a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League ranking. Number 10 in ERA, 10th in home runs, and they're in the top 10 in strikeouts. That pitching staff with quality stuff and great location that throws strikes and works ahead in the count. Runner on first. And Przenski calls for the pitch. Oh and one. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, he missed his spot with that one and got away with it. You want to go to the corners with that four-seam fastball. He found the heart of the plate, but didn't cost him anything. Here's the pitch. Ball. Cutter thought he had him, but it's one and two. One-two pitch coming. Ball. And he swings and hits this one foul. Swung on, line softly towards center. And that'll put Rayburn on first. Veradonia's headed for third. Not in time, in now there at third. For the, the opportunity for offense is right now. Number 30. And maybe he wanted to waste that pitch. It just didn't get it far enough away or up high. Well, just it was still caught a little too much of the plate. And the batter took advantage of it. Good focus at the plate. It's going to be Santiago now. Runs up to bunt, gets this one down. And Przinsky picks it up. And he throws on the first for the out and away. And they bring him home. Larish at the plate. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. I tell you what, Gary, we're seeing a solid, consistent, professional approach from these hitters. And it's paying off because they now have the lead. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks. The right center. Two down. The staff's issuing the fewest free passes. Brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Royals in second. Third, the Mariners. Rangers, fourth. And it's the Yankees, number five. It really speaks to the philosophy of the organization when you have the few. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And that's a base hit. Gets down in front of him. And Rayburn scores. And the Detroit Tigers. Wow, what a momentum swing for them. But well, what an absolutely great job of hitting right there. That pitch down and in, bearing in on him, and he fought it off to get that big base hit. And now time is called, and they're coming out of the dugout and heading to the mound. Now you don't know how long he's going to stay with this pitch. You're going to have to wait and see what they decide. He may be done. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Now that he's established the strike zone down and in, he can elevate a pitch or go with something soft away from the hitter. Ground ball towards second. Beckham. Throw in time. Forces him at second for the third out. They pick up two runs, three base hits, and leave the bases empty. Tigers with a three-run lead. And we get a look there at Jim Leland. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored, top five. Sinker swung on, missed 0 and 1. Just a solid offensive player, day in and there's a swing and a smash. And it's up against the wall. And Ramirez stretching it. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Ball with that big hit right there. He only needs a triple to complete the cycle. But hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. And Paul Canerco to bat. He's the league leader in ribbies. And he starts Canerco out. First pitch fastball. Misses badly that time. 1-0. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. The 1-0 pitch. Looked at Porcello's pitch, 1-1. One one. You throw the sinker ball to get the ground ball out. He got the called strike right there. If they swing, he's going to get his share of ground ball. There's one up, but gets away with it. One and two. The pitch. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. Now picked up three big base hits in the game last night. Swinging the bat very well. Hot shot towards the hole. And that's out number one stepping in the bag. 
Quickly, let's check out the league leaders and runs batted in, brought to you by State. Well, these are the run producers right here, the guys that, that ultimately decide whether your team wins or loses. They can pick up RBIs in any situation. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, leading the MLB in batting average. Now with one away and a man on third base, going to issue the walk. Now they're going to pitch around this guy, put him on base, and now try to get the double play. Not a bad start. And Beckham's in the box. Career batting average, 244 against the Tiger. Here's the first pitch. Slider swung on a miss. 0 and 1. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Got him. Strikeout number 10 today. Here's a better look at that single. Number 51. He's had a phenomenal sinker today. 10 strikeouts. Alex Rios has been in these situations before and gotten the job done. Let's see if he can get it done again. Top five AL in run score. Fouled off that first pitch and it's 0-1. He delivers. Strike two. Porcello gives himself a little room. Struck him out. That's going to be 11 in the game. So Rick Porcello holding it down. He's looking like a power pitcher today. Lots of swings and misses. Next up, Tigers. And Brandon Inge at the plate. He'll start things off here in the summer. Brandon Inge. Danks gets set and oh. delivers. Too low on that one for a ball. 1-0. Flat fastball right there. Just missed. Just below the knees. Right. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. 1-1 one, one on the way. On the ground to first. And it gets through a two-for-four ball game. Now, There'll be the more point. coming your way next point Wednesday. Point. We'll see Torrey Hunter and the Los Angeles Angels take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. It'll be a 7 p.m. start time. Batting is Carlos Guillen. Runner on first base, nobody out. First pitch, A.B. Swing and a hot shot. It's scooped up. Too late, and he is safe at second. A good piece of hitting right there. Didn't try to do too much with it going right back up the middle. Might have wanted it in the gap for an extra base, but that's a good hit. And he didn't drive it to the wall, but it hit to hit. It's Miguel Cabrera. Now a great chance for him and the Detroit Tigers. And Gary, although they have a lead, it still is fairly a close ball game right here. You have speed. Swing and a shot to third. Over to second for one. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. Now it's fair to say, Gary, they needed that out badly. Now he's got to come right back at him and get another one. They're down. They cannot give up more runs here this late in the game. And Inge crosses the plate. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. It's Rayburn at the plate. Steve, we've seen them continue to charge it up at the plate, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped. Offense coming to life late here, tacking on additional insurance runs, taking the pressure off the pitcher. And a discussion to take place here. I'm not sure what the result's going to be. Well, the way this is going, it doesn't seem like they want to pull him right away, so he may have talked them out of it. Hit sharply towards the hole. The opportunity for offense is right now. Opposite field hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. 
Well, it's not surprising they're going to the bullpen now. It's, I just thought maybe they waited a little bit too long. Should have gone and gotten them a little bit earlier. Here's the delivery. Keeps it down that time. 0 and 2. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. There's one. Back to first. Not in time. 1 and 2 won't get. He winds up with a throw he has to make all the way across the diamond and just couldn't get it there. Well, second base or shortstop a little closer to first. You probably get the out, just couldn't get him from third. Nice infield single on that one. Larish at the plate. Boy, this lineup is just pushing the pitching right now. Tough to get anybody out. Now, Gary, as you can see, this offense just keeps on rolling, keeps on producing. Why don't you keep on rolling, Gary? And in this game, there's no such thing as piling on. You want to carry over if you're hot now. Keep it going. Still 0 and 2. Swing and a foul straight back. And he fouls off another one. Ground ball to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. John Danks comes off the mound. Loosen him up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. There's a familiar face. I see Gian looking up. And uh, tough decisions, maybe, or maybe not. This bench needs some inspiration. We're trying to give it to him. It's going to be Przinski. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. First pitch to him. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. And Rayburn runs over, puts it away. And with this break in the action, let's take a look at the leaders in slugging brought to you by State Farm. That's well, a big time power hitters right here. Some guys that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. When they make contact, they can do some serious damage. And here's Martian. Hit hard to second. Santiago. And that'll set down Tian. And coming up for the Tigers. One game left with the White Sox. That's tomorrow. And they head up for a series against the Yankees on the road. They'll get some help from Robinson Cano. The Yankees will in that lineup. The team they rolled over last time out. That is a four game road series. They look to tip the balance against a team that looks pretty even against them on paper. The Cleveland Indians. That one bounced in the dirt. He swung. It's a strike. The pitch. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. And a good defensive half inning. Three up, three down. Tigers still enjoying a lead. Avila will get his chance at the plate now. Catcher, number 13, Alex. Splitter swung on and missed 0 and 1. Oh, that swing right there just a little bit tardy. Couldn't catch up to it. Here's the pitch. Up the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. Over to Canerco. One away. Shortstop. Before Adam Everett. And it's Everett batting. Bounced into a fielder's choice his last time. Nobody on base, one away. And the first pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0 and 1. Boy, he's got such great rotation on that slider. It's just unbelievable depth to that pitch. Here's the pitch. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. When you got a slider pitcher, his greatest fear is that that thing just sits there. This one doesn't. Well, you got to stay on top of the ball and really pull it through, but he does it so very well. Good slider that time. Rule the ball. One and two. Now, if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. You're out. Swing and a miss on the fastball. Second out in the inning. 
Two, two strikes. The hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. Base is empty with two up. And the first pitch. Takes that first pitch low in the strike zone. Strike one. Well, they need a shutout, shutout inning right here to get back in there and score some runs. At least looking like they got a chance to get through it without giving up some runs. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. It's the kind of inning the defense likes. Three up, three down. Detroit six, the White Sox one. Looking on, Jim Leland. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. Now, they're losing a little bit in the defensive department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just odd to make this move right now. On the way. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 and 1. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so they need a big inning here. They can't wait. Swing and a rocket toward short. One away. Now the State Farm leaderboard. The batters stacking up with hits this month. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. He is just a triple shy of the cycle now. Well, it's the toughest leg of the cycle to get, but if he hits it into the gap, look at him run. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Ramirez will foul that one away. The pitch. Ramirez fouls it off again. Got him. That is strikeout number 12. That's a great strikeout right there, Gary. Three pitches, and he sits him down. How about that for efficiency? And he starts Canerco out. Now swinging a shot toward second. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. No scoring here, ending this. So Carlos Guillen leads it off. We will get to see Bobby Jenks pitching as they make the pitching swap. Johnny faces these Detroit hitters. Main objective? Well, Bobby Jenks is one of these big, big closers that come in the game, kind of like they were back in the 80s and the early 90s. A big guy that comes out and throws absolute oh. gas. Easy, smooth motion that generates 98 to 100 mile an hour fastball. He's a strikeout pitcher and he finishes games. Hit on the ground over to shortstop. And Ramirez fields the, the ball. Back. So Guillen is set down. First pick, number 24. And Miguel Cabrera to bat. He's had one hit four times up. And he starts Cabrera out. Hit hard on the ground to short. The two away. There's a look at teams getting it done on our league leaderboard. The staffs that have the lowest DRA. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Yankees. Third spot, the Red Sox. Fourth, the Mariners. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode. Swung on and ripped towards second. And that's going to do it in this half inning. How about that? Only needed four pitches to set down the guys. Tremendous. Detroit six. The White Sox one. Quick look in. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And it's Carlos Quentin in the box now. It's an important job leading off that home half here in the ninth. This crowd is restless and ready for that game winning run. First pitch to Quentin. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch 0 and 1. Well, a non save situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. Taps this one foul to the right. Struck him out. 13 Ks, one game. 
Gunn picks that up at 73 miles per hour, and Nassau's going to pick up the break on that one. And Beckham's in the box. Struck out swinging last time. Base is empty, one out. And here's the first one. Pitch on the swung on that is hit and it's through that's a base hit. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Trying again here just one for three thus far. Runner at first with one down. And he starts Rios out. Swings and misses at the fastball 0 and 1. Well if you're going to be late on the fastball you're going to have trouble hitting up here and he's struggling right now. That's a strike and it's 0 and 2 time for Rios now to protect. Hot shot towards the hole. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Just kind of lean in Steve and slap that thing the other way in that kind of pitch. Well that you can't pull that pitch if you do it's going to be a ground ball to short you want to punch it the right field. He's one of the best at doing it. It's going to be Przinsky flew out last time. He deals a swing line to left center and it's through into the gap should be extra bases and he will score from second base and safe at the plate he comes across. I mean the back. But they don't want to just lay down and die. They're going to continue to try to battle and see if they can't come back into this thing. They're getting a little bit closer at the very least. They gain some momentum for the next day. Now here is Martia. Well, at this point of the ball game, you've got to get this run in. Well, you have to take advantage of the opportunities. You need base runners. He'd love to trade spots with the base runner. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. Swings on that first pitch. Misses the fastball. 0 and 1. They're moving a little bit closer right now, Gary. It's what they need to do if they're going to try to come back in this game and get base runners on. And they picked up two. You're Struck him out, and that makes 14 in this game. I just don't think you can make it any easier than that. Three pitches up, down. See you later. He's already back in the bench. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. That swung on line towards the gap in left center. That one a one hopper off the wall. There's the throw. And Pierzynski comes in. Another night for this one yet. They're chipping away at this thing. Now just a two-run margin. Let's see if they can keep it going. We'll get to see Jose Belverde pitching. He's going to be Detroit's closer. Well, it's about time. I mean, I don't know what they weren't seeing from the dugout. They should have gotten out of this game a lot earlier. First pitch on the way. Strike one. Belverde got him to swing at that 0 1 now. A good progress for this offense. Anytime you can put up a crooked number in a comeback, that really helps. They picked up three. Swing sends this one on the line to right center. One bounce onto the wall. There's the throw. A run scores. And in the back. Well, the comeback continues. Rally time. A big hit right there. Now they're just within one run. This one's not over just yet. Great opportunity for Alexi Ramirez to show what he's made of and to come up big for his teammates. And he's got a chance here with a runner in scoring position, Steve, to get this thing knotted. Well, the pitcher's got to find a way to retire this hitter and not let this run right. score. Watch at bat here. Fastball swung out of miss, stone one. Now picking up four big runs in an inning. That goes a long way to cutting the deficit to get you back into a ball game. Here's the pitch. To get him to go after that slider, but it's one and two. And he struck him out. That strands the tying run at 
second ball game over. But here the Tigers have to be satisfied with his win. A good ball game. They got the pitching and hitting. As we check out the highlight reels of our Pepsi Clutch performer, Rick Porcello, a young man who continues to impress. Well, anytime you can come in with an arsenal with a fastball like this young man has, you have a chance to have double-digit strikeouts, and that's exactly what this man did. He was throwing that great fastball, mixing in and up. And they come into hostile territory, Steve, and take this one by one run. Well, both teams had a chance to win it. Goes down to the very end, but the visiting club outplayed them. So glad you could join us. For Steve Phillips and John Cruck, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll see you real soon.